welcome back to another episode. Today we're taking a look at our Tura Isuzu D-Max that we've been using now for about three years to travel all over uh, Australia. So we'll start uh, at the front, do a bit of a rundown. The purpose of this vehicle is for us to be able to hitch up at a moment's notice and uh, go and travel. We are using um, a Recon R2 Hyper Camper that comes with us most of the time as well. Um, this was built using a variety of uh, components. We paid for everything that is on the vehicle. And given it's been three years, I can tell you what has been good and, uh, and not so good and why. Um, we're winding up 10 days now from the south coast. Had an absolute blast down there. We're staying at, I think it's Queerer Up Lake for tonight. So we'll run through the vehicle, um, bearing in mind that it was built uh, not on a budget, but I didn't want to spend ridiculous amounts of money. Um, it is our family vehicle around town. Um, we just wanted something that was reliable and reasonably capable. I come from a twin locked 80 series that obviously was significantly better off-road. This does what we want. So I've got two little boys and my wife down there waiting patiently. Um, this setup allows us to travel in comfort and uh, also to get to some remote spots that people don't get to so often. So we shall make a start. This is a 2016 Isuzu D-Max. Um, we purchased it as a demo vehicle. It had 32 kilometers on the clock. So it now has about 60,000 Ks on the clock. Um, we've had a few issues with it, leaking transfer case seals, um, and the turbo was replaced as soon as we got it, basically. But both issues have been resolved. We've done uh, quite a few places that are remote and uh, not had any major issues with it, so we're pretty happy with it. Anyway, um, let's make a start. So it's done about 60,000 Ks. Um, over three years. As I said, most of these mods have been on that whole time. Uh, it is an automatic, um, which was one of the requirements. Sarah doesn't have a manual license, and um, frankly, I'm converted anyway. Autos are much nicer for touring. So there we go. So we'll make a start. Uh, AFN Bulba on the front, made in Portugal. Uh, they are a bit different to most. I went for that for a number of reasons, um, the first being that it doesn't stick out very far. So if you look at where the front of the vehicle is, it's uh, quite close in. Not so good in an accident, um, but it means you don't have a lot of overhang, which is better for your weight. On the subject of weight, it's also very light um, of the steel bars. It's uh, one of the lighter ones out there. So we are running a Runvar 9,500 pound winch, I think, um, under there. Been pretty happy with it, haven't used it all that often, to be honest. Um, Safari snorkel, pretty standard. We are running the Bridgestone Jeweler 697s at the moment. Um, I started off with the Toyo AT2s, both very good tyres. Um, the Bridgestones were given to us, so there'll be a full review on them later, but happy so far, no, no real complaints. Uh, so, the RFI antenna that is paired to an ICOM uh, remote mount UHF in the cab, I'll show you that later, very happy. We had the same combination uh, on our 80 series, fantastic, flawless. So, under the bonnet. Really, there hasn't been too much. There's uh, a rear diff extended breather under there. The rest of them run to just here anyway. Um, I have fitted a bigger battery, so Amaron N70. Um, and then you've got your winch isolator. And uh, excuse this, that needs to be fixed up later on. We're running the dual bracket arrangement here. So this is a 30 micron pre 
fuel filter and then the OEM, I think it's a 5 micron after that uh, and also the Provent 200 catch can. So we did have a HPD on this side, HPD catch can. Uh, I received a report from Curtin Uni not long uh, after fitting it and also not long after catching almost nothing. Um, so we've gone to the Provent. It is significantly better in terms of uh, efficiency. So there's a full post on the website about that if you're interested. Anyway, moving along, underneath we are running Bush Skins 4mm uh, mild steel, whatever they call it, zinc. Um, I don't know, I forget the term. But anyway, they have been pretty good. It runs right the way down here. The only thing it doesn't protect is the transfer case. But the most important thing for us is the auto transmission. Um, we are running old man emu suspension so that's the the heaviest kit that they make um, i think the fronts are 135 kilo um, and the rears down here are 600 kilo uh, no airbags or anything under there just straight load so we did get a gvm upgrade um, that allows us to run 3220, I think it's 2950 is the, the normal GVM. So not a humongous uh, upgrade in capacity, but I didn't want anything massive anyway. There comes a point where you, uh, you load the vehicle up way beyond what it was intended to do and things just break. Um, yeah, tyres. So Bridgestone 697s, they are in a 265-75-16. So they are actually 54 mil bigger than the factory SX um, wheels that came on this. You're allowed to get away with that because of uh, the LSM and, sorry, LSU, LST models came uh, with some bigger tyres. So they're only they're about 13 mil under the, the 50 mil increase. Uh, that is about it on the front, I think. So moving backwards, we have a Bull Motor Bodies canopy. So these are locally made in Western Australia, not far from my place. Um, I picked this unit up secondhand. It actually came off the Hilux. And it had a extended tray that came out to about here, which I've cut off and shortened. Um, they are very, very good quality units, all aluminium, um, except for the front panel. So I don't know whether that's fiberglass or plastic, I can't remember. But, you know, really good quality units, um, all modular, so you can bolt whatever you want on. So this side is the junk side. Um, I said before, we're coming to the end of a trip. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here. so. A lot of kids rubbish, but we'll run through what we have. So here's all your recovery gear, um, compressor, all the bits and pieces. And then I've got two of these little Pelican cases that the uh, lockers came in. So the top one is fluids. Um, we run a whole heap of uh, gear oil and chain bar oil, um, the toilet stuff, um, just little bits and pieces like that. Um, there's oil in there for the transfer case and diffs and that kind of stuff. And in the bottom, there's a whole heap of nuts and bolts and tie straps and all that. Um, we do have the diesel fuel additive, you know, funnels and bits and pieces. Um, I run the Stanley combination set. It's just handy to have everything. And this is the tool bag which has everything under the sun. Um, pliers and, you know, all your shifters and circuit pliers and all that kind of stuff um, snips and whatever impact sockets under there um, and then we run the Ryobi gear so in the bag up there there's the Ryobi impact gun and so forth um, drills and all that um, max tracks up here these canopies come actually I don't know whether they're standard but anyway it's got lights um, and a little diesel heater here that we use for the camper trailer um, and that's about it underneath 
they run a 40 litre, sorry, 50 litre water tank um, and a pump there that is all plumbed up and it works. We tend to just use it as gravity feed. Uh, it works more than well enough. We don't have any issues with it. Um, so yeah, that canopy is probably about, uh, it'd be nearly seven years old, I reckon. Um, and it works awesome. So on top, big, steady 42 inch. Um, it's a STK, ST4K, I think, LED light bar. Uh, really good, we're very happy with it. And a 200 watt panel. Um, and it is a genuine 200 watt panel. 1580 by 808 is the size they should be. If they're not, then you are getting ripped off. Uh, so this side is the kitchen side. Um, so again, lots of storage. Fold down table, one of the best things that we ever did. Fantastic. Um, these are the Bunnings Oats drawers. And they are awesome as well, lightweight. So in the top is all our bits and pieces, rags and gloves and graphite powder, fuses, nuts and bolts, um, our old like cable ties, all that kind of stuff that you really don't want to use, but it's there if we need it. Um, all our spares, so belts, hoses, bits of rubber, um, fuel filters, engine filters, air filters, all that stuff. First aid kit. So we carry a fair bit of stuff. Um, obviously you don't want to be in a situation where you could have had the gear and you don't. Mosquito stuff and uh, bugs and all that. And then we've got our day use drawers and that sort of stuff um, loaded up. So that shuts up nice and neatly. Fridge slide. So I built all this myself. It's 12 mil marine ply. Um, you don't need to go any thicker than that. If you're careful with your work, it works really well. So 55 litre Evercool um, and enough space for a jerry. We don't run a long range tank. Um, as much as I'd love one, I just don't have the uh, weight capacity um, without reducing a bit more. So we're not running that. We just carry a jerry and the camper holds two as well, so an extra 60 litres. Same, same, just a bit more inconvenient. So, little tie down points up here. We don't use them too much anymore. We did initially. Um, I built this box as well, and then we've got a mobile auto electrician, uh, Hunter Auto Electrics in Perth, if you are looking for an awesome one. So three Andersons for your outlets. Um, your USBs, cigarette plugs, a few switches, none of those are wired up, only that one, which is the pump. We have the projector dual battery monitor, um, just tells you the voltage, I don't need anything more fancy than that. In here, I'm not sure how well you're able to see, but there is all the electrical gear. So there's a projector IDC25, DC-DC battery charger, uh, fuses, circuit breakers, and then a whole heap of Anderson plugs. So I got the Sparky to wire it up so that in a pinch we can connect the second battery um, to the main one, the main cranking battery, if ever we get a flat or, you know, whatever. Um, there is also, I don't know whether you guys saw it on the other side, but there's an old PWM regulator. So if that... Um, projector unit dies, we can still plug it across to the old PWM and charge the batteries. Um, on the subject of that, there is, which you probably won't be able to see too well down there, a 150 amp hour Bosch AGM um, that does the trick. And obviously it is located well in front of the axle. Um, so we're very happy with it. That, our batteries never go below, sort of 12.4 is like the worst I've ever seen them. Um, they've got more than enough capacity. We run a projector 350 watt pure sine wave inverter in there. Um, that does the drone batteries, camera batteries, you know, laptops and odds and ends. We really don't need anything more than that. 
So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, there's really not much to it. It's a, a moderate sort of build. You know, there's some very flashy ones going around these days. Um, some of them get used, some of them not so much. We have done a lot of camping over the years. Um, this camper trailer here, we have had for a year and we've probably done about 70 odd nights in it or something. Um, prior to that, we towed a soft floor and uh, yeah, 150 nights in that as well. So it gets used and um, yeah, we love it. So I will, um, I'll do a full walkthrough on the Recon RT behind me as well. Um, I know there's a few people that are very keen on that. Um, but any questions that you've got about the D-Max, um, just let us know. Happy to answer. There is a full comprehensive post on the website, forwarddrivingaustralia.com. Um, I will put links to all that. You guys can have a look. If you have an older full drive and you're thinking about moving to something newer like this, um, there's a post on there about why we got rid of the 80 and uh, moved to this. Obviously, they're totally different vehicles, um, but we're really happy with it. Um, so really, there's not much else on this that we had fitted and uh, removed or replaced. We kind of got everything right um, in terms of what we put on it. Anderson plug there, rear camera. Um, yeah, that's about it. There's not, like I said, there's not too much that we've fitted that we've been unhappy with. Um, and realistically, it was a... A mild build, as I said, not super expensive. Um, I don't know how long we'll have it for, but uh, it does the trick for now. Actually, I forgot the interior stuff. So, really not much in here either. It's pretty bog stock. Um, we are running an ultra gauge. So, if you guys have a modern vehicle, and uh, sorry, just trying to get the keys out. And you don't run a scanner or an OB2, OBD2 unit, uh, you should get one. They're fantastic. So they run the. I'll turn it on. They run. Uh, <clears throat> they have the ability to clear codes as well as all the other gizmos. So. You can see on here, I have uh, the engine temp, I've got the automatic transmission fluid, the bolts, boost, uh, load and the intake temp. Some of the more important things that I like to monitor. You can set alarms up for everything, there's seven pages on those things, they are fantastic. Um, we run the RAM phone mount, uh, and that is really about it in here. There is the ICOM remote UHF. So the unit is under the dash. That's it, absolutely fantastic speaker on here. Nothing in the way to annoy you. And the red art brake controller. Um, that's all we run. So at the moment, yeah, no diff locks, no tunes. Um, that's all pretty standard. I will probably go down the path of a tune um, eventually. For well, now we're happy with the reliability and so forth. We did some mods to the uh, 80 that, whilst they were fun, uh, not so good for reliability and uh, cost us a fair bit of money. So yeah, maybe a rear locker, um, potentially long range tank if we can spare some weight. Um, I want to rip the head unit out of the front and put a proper mapping system in there. Other than that, we're happy with it. It does what we want. Not uh, a ridiculous amount of room for the kids. Excuse the mess. Um, but anyway, it does the trick for now. So Anyway, cheers for watching. Hopefully uh, you guys got something out of it. As I said, if you've got questions, let us know. Uh, and we will see you around in another episode.